God's love. Elevating, energizing, empowering. Miracles happen when you know that you are loved. Peter Youngren has communicated God's love with millions from every religion and culture. Get ready for your ultimate life because you are loved. Welcome to our telecast today. We're talking about two challenges that Canadians will face like never before in the 2020s. And I submit most of the world is in the same category. And Pastor Nathan Thurber has joined me here today. And uh, one of these challenges is a very internal challenge within the church. And the other challenge is a very external challenge from within our Canadian society. But the same would hold true in certainly in the United States, Australia, uh, Europe, and, and in some aspects of it in every country of the world. And I would say today, Nathan, on this telecast, we are wanting to end this with a powerful message of hope to people that are really hurting. And that's really what we want to do in our church, isn't it? Absolutely. And you spoke this message at our church. Yeah. Uh, and it was a powerful, I recommended it, I forwarded it on, I got a whole church to, you know, yeah. it's very powerful. So you got to stay tuned today. Yeah, well, that's good. And, and I want to give part of what I share this. So here is uh, uh, part one, you could say, of uh, my monologue or my take on this unique challenge. The first challenge is a gospel erosion in the church. We may think of in terms of gospel erosion in society. I'm talking about in the church. A U.S. research organization, Lifeway Research, uh, did a study where they solicited a, a thousand sermons preached by pastors in evangelical churches during Christmas and Easter. The reason they chose Christmas or Easter because that is the time most commonly when churches are focusing on presenting the gospel to those who otherwise may not come to church. And so they wanted to see what, to what degree was there a gospel context, a con, a content rather, in those Easter and Christmas sermons, and they found that only 6% had a clear gospel presentation. Now, what was the criteria? Well, to have a gospel presentation, according to LifeWay Research, there needed to be two, two components. The problem, the human problem of sin, and particularly of works. You know, in the Bible, uh, the, the greatest sin is a religion based on works where we think that our works will make our righteous, our good works, uh, rather than needing God's grace. So a clear articulation of that problem and then the solution, which is Jesus Christ, had to be presented. Now, it's possible to preach from the Bible to invite people to Christ without presenting the gospel. It, it, it's possible to say, please receive Jesus in your heart without any explanation or proclamation of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. It's possible to teach from the Bible and find motivational thoughts and, and helpful thoughts, good thoughts, and then at the end of those good thoughts to have a prayer add-on where you say, now, if you want a new life, uh, say this prayer, receive Jesus, and, and really you haven't presented the gospel. It's possible to use the scriptures to preach a message of morality, which is basically a message of cause and effect. If you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad, etc. So do good. And, and, and that's, we believe in that. We believe in good morals. But a message of morality is not the gospel. As good as it is, may, may I say it again, we believe in good morals, but preaching morality is not preaching the gospel. The gospel is good news, is something good that God has done for people who are even the least deserving. The gospel is, is powerful. It, it produces result. I say to people on those in the charismatic church, Preaching healings and miracles is not the same thing as preaching the gospel. I mean, you, you can tell stories of, of healing, and, and I tell our students in our Global Gospel Institute, do not become miracle preachers because you, you can talk about miracles and tell stories and get people all enthused, but that's not the gospel. 
The gospel is the clear articulation of who Christ is, what Christ has done, the gospel story, and then miracles follow. They are not the main dish, so to speak. They are the result of the gospel. And so the gospel is a story of God's love revealed without limitation through Jesus Christ. It's not principles and rules and meditations as valuable as those may be. The gospel is a story of what God has done. I would say the following components is in the gospel that Christ is our source. It's what Paul said to the Athenians, that in him we live and move and have our being. And, and I remind you, those Athenians, they weren't Christians. They didn't have the Bible. They were just humans. And, and yet Paul says, you live and move and have your being through this Christ. And, and then that the Christ who is the upholder of all things was revealed in Jesus. And then a third component is Christ's blood, that it was shed as the remission for sin. Forgiveness is the cry of every human. And Christ's blood has been shed for that very reason. And then Christ's victory, that Christ defeated sin and death and hell. Death has been defeated. You know, humans all over the world have, have one overriding problem, and that is death, the fear of death. And to know that Christ has conquered death brings enormous peace, enormous contentment, enormous joy to the human heart. And then in, in a gospel presentation, there's urgency that, that you must be born again. This is necessary. You know, one of the words we find in Scripture is the word perish. The word perish is in John 3, 16, that whoever believes in him will not perish. Well, that word perish is the Greek word apolumi. It is also translated lost. And if, once we understand this, we better understand the meaning of the word perish. So he could say in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not be lost. It could also say that the sheep had wandered astray, was lost, but it could also say it was perished. It was perished. We could talk about the lost sheep and the lost son, or we could talk about the perished son or the lost son. So think about that, 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 that whatever way, whether it's the word lost or perish, there's an urgency to that word. So we have a concern. The Lifeway research showed us that only 6% of evangelical churches at Christmas or Easter really gave a gospel presentation. There's so many other things we can do in church. My dear, uh, the late dear friend, late friend, Dr. T.L. Osborne said to me, Peter, listen to Christian television. Have you noticed how little Jesus is mentioned? How it's possible for preachers to talk for, for an hour and, and, and quote scripture verses and they think I must be preaching the gospel because I'm preaching somewhere from the Bible. I'm finding some life lessons. I'm founding some, finding some principles here. But they never mention redemption and Jesus Christ other than in the closing prayer. That was his comment to me. So I think we're in a crisis. We need to retake the gospel because the gospel is the power of God. Morality is, lessons are good and truthful, but they're not powerful to transform a person. The gospel is transformational. Nathan, I'm waiting for your comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, comment, you can comment to you directly on your text line as well, but uh, you know, it's, it's possible, I think, even to listen to you preach, for example, any preacher, T.L. Osborne. And, and at, you know, when you preach the gospel, it ultimately ends up with the results of a good motivation, be it healing or victory in life, or on the other side of the coin, morality. Those are the results. And, and, and when you preach the gospel, or, or, or any of us who preach the you know, the end result ends up there. So it's possible even to listen uh, and then only remember 
the the icing on the cake, if you will, which the, the result, morality and motivation, are results of preaching the gospel. But it, if you don't pay attention to what went on beforehand, you know, it's possible to, to even listen to you and think, you know, I, I've heard people say, well, he's a healing preacher or a miracle preacher or whatever I preacher. test that, you know right. that. Yeah, but, yeah. But because those, those are the results. Those are the results. I think in some ways, let's not be lazy. Let's, let's remember how we get to the, get to the results. Uh, you know, because, uh, you know, you can, without recognizing the, the it's like looking at a per business person who's very successful. Well, look at what it went into the, the, look what ingredients went into the success. Now, I'm not comparing, you know, the gospel with a successful business person. I'm not, but my point is the results of the gospel come through, as you just pointed out, the preaching of the gospel. But if you're not careful, even listening to someone like yourself, who's, who's issuing this challenge, you can be called, you know, miracles, healing, whatever, motivational, et cetera, et cetera. All good things, all good things. Results of the good. Jesus, I, 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 Jesus' yeah. ministry was full of it. I think you, this is why it's good that you're sitting here kind of evaluating and making comments because it makes me think when I say morality, people are like, look, you're not against morality. Are you? Of course not. Of course not. Uh, but, but as we often said, preaching and teaching good morals does not produce good morality. At worst, it actually produces hypocrisy. But preaching Christ and revealing Christ actually results in good morals. You could put anything there. Preaching healing does not produce healing. Preaching exactly. motivation doesn't produce long-lasting motivation. I mean, it can get people excited about healing, excited about motivation, excited about good morals. And put it all in the same. For some reason, people pull out morality when you start talking this way because, I, you know, whatever. But, but I think they all can be lumped into the same. We're for it all for it all is just how do you get there right um we'd be it's you know anyhow it's the old wendy's commercial where's the beef you know you got the, the patties you got the you got the bun you got the ketchup whatever else the sauces but where's the beef let's be said, honest the gospel is the beef it's a little bit easier just to say you know you know just to get to the end of the story it is you know just to preach motivation just to preach as a preacher even uh it's easier just to go to the end of it preach healing preach motivation preach good morals it, it's kind of, it doesn't take much revelation, really, of the word, because anybody can kind of... You just have to be all, a good public speaker, that's you, it. You, you just have to be a good public speaker and have some mind, you know, even, you know... Yeah, but, but, but we're not good public speakers. That's not our point. We are to present the message of Christ. We are Christ carriers, okay? The, the producer is waving at me. We need to, we don't have commercials, so we have some advertising. What am I supposed to advertise? Yes, of course. You need to, I shouldn't say you need to, I really think you'd want to have our magazine. This is the latest 2020. Here, God's vision is the world and an analysis, the gospel in 2020. And you have different articles. Nathan Thurber has a uh, very helpful articles here about stepping into God's abundant supply. Uh, we have reports from the Buddhist world, the Islamic world. We have a, another teaching article here. We have reports from our associate ministers. We, we have a lot of good things. I address freedom of speech in Canada here in my editorial. And so you'll want to uh, take a look at that. And also, if you need information about our Global Gospel Institute. And at this point, let me say, today we're going to pray. And uh, you can text me your prayer request. Here's our text telephone. You can call the number on your screen or uh, you can just go online. That's really, really a great way to do it. And so uh, go ahead and do all that. And uh, we're going to pray and believe with you at the very end of this uh, uh, presentation of this program. And certainly, the next part, my, my second take here on a problem that is uh, growing at our doorstep, Canada, United States, in the entire Western society, I suppose around the world, it is so, so challenging. It is an epidemic. It is a crisis. I talked about the first challenge was an erosion of the gospel. That's internal. Here is an ex external challenge that we face in our nation, an epidemic of social ills. The last year on record, 4,460 opioid-related deaths in Canada. That's for 2018. And we may say, well, well, what group of people? Every age group. You'd be amazed how many, 55 years and over, uh, that, that have suffered uh, 
deaths related to opioid and drug overdoses. Uh, murder has been on the increase. Many people don't realize that in the last uh, year that we have the full record, there were more murders per capita in Toronto than in New York City. I was very close, but, but Toronto was a little bit ahead. Uh, and we think, well, as Canadians, we think, well, that's, that's somewhere in the United States. You know, it's, it's all bad down there, but, but no, this has happened right in our doorstep. And, and, and if you live in the greater Toronto area, every time you turn on the news, it seems you hear of some other shooting, some other murder. Uh, Canada recorded 4,000 suicides over the last few years annually. Mental illness is an epidemic. Many were, were stirred when uh, Canadian Juno Award winner Kelly Fraser, 26-year-old, committed suicide. You can see her picture there, beautiful young lady and, and a great talent. Uh, you, you know, the government of Canada, I'm talking about government statistics, and, and maybe they don't, it might be worse than that, but they say one in three Canadians will suffer a mental illness in their lifetime. And they say that currently, if we were speaking right now at any given time, one in five Canadians suffer from mental illness. The most common is an anxiety, anxiety disorder or depression. Uh, and, 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 and how do we solve this? Well, the government's solution is increase our health care, more education. And we, we, we keep hearing a billion dollars here and a billion dollars there, but it doesn't seem to really solve the problem. We are facing and will face, and I predict this to you. It doesn't take any great insight to see where it's heading. This epidemic of social ills, and I just use these examples, mental illness, opioid, suicide, but there are other problems within that, that headline of social ills. Now, historically, spiritual awakenings have thrived and built been propelled in times of social ills where many who were downtrodden, were in pain, were hurting, received the gospel, which is why it's so important that we, have, we know the gospel. And, 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 and they were set free. People who were addicted, people who had no hope. I think of the, of the emergence of the Salvation Army in England when they say the, the whole country was in a drunken stupor, more or less. I'm sure that there were some sober folks, but, but that's how they looked at it. The, the whole country was downtrodden, and they heard the message, you can be born again. If anyone is in Christ, that person has a, is a new creation. It's not just turning the page, but I can have new life. And you know, some of the songs that I love the most were songs that were birthed out of that kind of a spiritual awakening where, where hurting people were set free. I think of a song I sing in our church quite often, Nathan. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. Then Jesus came and he set me free. Somebody wrote that song who felt like they were trapped and they were set free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. And that could be a physical prison or a prison of sickness or a prison of, of addiction or pain. Those kind of songs were born out of spiritual awakenings. And so, as I say, this problem is growing. The government is alerting us. We hear about it on every side. In every, in every city across our nation, there's any number of addiction treatment clinics. Uh, it's a growing problem. Where's the church? And I want to say, let's declare once again, Jesus sets the captives free. That's my second take <laughs> for this program. Well, um, you want my comments. So yes, I say, I, the reason I think we believe that the gospel is the only solution for these social ills, I think this, I, we believe and I think the scriptures teach that the social ills are a result of a broken identity. And I think that describes sin. Sin is, uh, in the scriptures at least, by Paul, described not as a verb. That's the action outflow of what sin is. But sin is broken identity. Sin is a noun. It's, a it's, our, it's who we were created to be. 
uh, and when, when man fell or left that identity, we, our identity was broken. And, you know, even in the natural, we all act out of our identity. It's why, you know, it's why I care about my children, that they have a healthy self-esteem. Because if they have a healthy self-esteem, they'll act in appropriate ways. We, act, we just act out of our identity. And if our identity is flawed or broken, then I, I won't live up to my full potential. Well, our identity as created by God was to... This is what the gospel is, uh, teaches us that our identity was to know that we're loved by God. That, you, that is the title of your program, You Are Loved. It goes back to identity. And when we, you know, Paul, Paul talked about this all the time, about our identity. You know, you were predestined, he said, to be sons and daughters of God. That, that speaks of our identity, knowing we're loved by God. Sin marred that, broke the identity. So Jesus came, he identified with us in that broken state. And now he gives us new life. That, you know, and, that, and then I believe, and that's why I think this message of the gospel helps those with social ills. But, you know, we can tell, you know, condemnation, you know, t getting on our soapbox and telling the, you know, the people who are doing the murders how bad they are doesn't fix the problem. It, 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 it goes to the, you know, that is the outflow of a broken identity, but it doesn't go to the root problem. I can tell someone to put their gun away, but they still in their heart have murder. When this issue... And it goes back to even, I love the title of your program, You Are Loved, because that it fixes the identity. And when your identity is fixed, when you know that, you know, you're loved and you have value, you don't act out in such ways. It even goes to mental illness. You know, if you know, if you have an experience of God's love, uh, then you're not going to, you know, suffer with all of these anxiety disorders and et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. because you're rooted in your identity. You, you know, uh, I think through my lifetime of all the people that I have seen set free by Jesus Christ, and, and this doesn't preclude good counseling and a change of habits and disciplines. We're not telling people to live That's the carelessly. fruit. That's, That's the good the part. That all comes out of it. But we are saying that in a moment... Jesus can set a person free. And, and, and it doesn't mean that then you go on and say, well, I get bound again and he'll set me free again. But as Nathan is saying, then, then there's a power to, to change habits, to change lifestyle. Nathan, I'm thinking if somebody who is addicted to opioids, suicidal, some other addiction, it's a lot of addiction. And they're watching us right now. I believe that Jesus Christ sets you free today. I, I want to ask you right at home, together with Nathan and I here, just lift your hand where you are. We're coming, going to a video very soon, but, but this is happening now. This is a now moment. And so would you, would you just focus with me at home? Lord Jesus, we have shared today on this telecast that you set the captives free and that this has happened in biblical accounts, is happening in more modern history, a people are set free. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to addiction and the pain underlying that condition, addiction to go in the name of Jesus. And I want you to say this with me, say, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you. Thank you that you died for my sins and rose again. Thank you that you're alive. Come and live in me, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And just go ahead and receive that new life from God. Um, Nathan, I got to look on my desk here. We want to send this. I'm sure our producer will get it up there, but can you hold that there for a moment? There's two of them. Just let's hold. We will send you both of these. Get a close up of that. If, if this will just help you to get started. And by the way, you can go to our website and download this Enlightenment tract. It's available there in several languages, including in English. But we're adding languages all the time. But uh, that one you can get on our website. Maybe we can get this one as well. Uh, I see our web manager sitting over there, so I'm telling her we can get that on as well. And, and you can get it there, but we can send it to you. We love to do that. Well, Nathan, again today, uh, we get talking here and we, we, we didn't, we have two great stories we wanted to show people, one last week and one this week, and I'm saving them, so I'm telling you, they're coming up, they're good, and you're going to enjoy them, but uh, thank you so much for helping us to touch the world. Look at this and let it touch your heart. Our special, what we call our VIP message, very important person, visionary in partnership, watch. 
We know who we are. We know our purpose, to pass on the love and mercy of Jesus Christ to others. We did not receive God's grace to keep it to ourselves, but to share it with the world. And we do more together than any one of us could do alone. We are the VIP family. Our high honor is to serve, to stand with other believers in faith, sacrifice and compassion. We are old and young, male and female. We live in apartments and in private homes. Some of us just enter the workplace and others are retired. We are widows or widowers. We are the VIP family. We live in big cities and rural towns. We work on farms and in retail. Some of us are professionals, some factory workers, some teachers, pilots, pastors, drivers, social workers, electricians and plumbers, home workers and students. We are the VIP family. Most of all, we are co-workers with Jesus Christ in the greatest task ever given, to give the gospel to every person. We have provided follow-up for more than 17 million new believers. We have trained more than 375,000 pastors and leaders. We operate Bible schools on three continents. We broadcast the gospel through television, books, and tracts. We are the VIP family, and our work has just begun. Now, we invite you. Jesus needed the 12, the 70, and the 500. Paul had a team of co-workers, and you are needed in this great task to finish the assignment that Jesus gave, that every person will be able to hear and receive the gospel. If not now, then when? If not you, then who? Say yes today to join the VIP family. Call 416-745-1820 or go online, give.peteryoungren.org. There is an urgency to this. Uh, we, we're doubling. We're reaching more people. That means more follow-up for new believers. It means more campaigns, more stadiums, more pastor seminars, more Bible school campuses. And when I say a Bible school campus, I'm talking about our two-year training program. And so the, the greatest need, I say, if people say, Peter, what's the greatest need? And of course, we love when people give a donation that is large and sizable. And if you're able to do that, thank you. But, but, but to know that we have a VIP family, people who do something every month, they put aside whether it's $30 a month, $40 a month, some do $100 a month, some do $250 a month, and some do $25 a month, whatever it is. That means so much because it is the backbone of us being able to continue to do this uh, around the world. And uh, Nathan here just came back now from Indonesia. Uh, other co-workers are about to leave for Indonesia and then Ethiopia. But, but you are the real co-worker. We need your help. So please, you've seen the information there. We need to hear from you. Thank you for watching today. And remember, you are loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1 or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.